The case of this patient, who presents very substantial composite resin on one molar, is at the limit of the indications for the direct technique. However, for financial reasons, this patient would prefer to avoid an indirect restoration. The preoperative x-ray plate shows the volume of the existing restoration and the problem of adaptation of the distal portion. The choice of the shade is made using a Vita shade guide. An A3 shade is selected for a good integration with the surrounding teeth. In the Ceramex mono shading system, the A3 shade corresponds to an M5 shade that will fulfil well its aesthetic function in this posterior situation. The first stage consists of removing all the old restoration, being careful of course to preserve the remaining dental tissues. A pear-shaped burr, reference 830, is chosen for the purpose and we proceed progressively, starting from the centre of the restoration and moving then to the edges. By transparency, the dental tissues can be easily distinguished from the composite material. The thickness of the remaining dental tissue is very thin at the distolingual cusp and it is already clear to us that it will need replacement. A wooden wedge is positioned in the distal interproximal space to both protect the clinical field and create a gap that will avoid damaging the neighbouring tooth. The whole of the composite is removed at the proximal face. And we realise how thin is the distolingual cusp. It's therefore particularly fragile. There is still some old composite in the deep part of the restoration and we can see the secondary decay at the cervical level. The residual composite is therefore removed and it becomes clear to us how voluminous is this restoration and how fragile is the distolingual wall. The wall will therefore be prepared and the burr will let it burst into pieces. This is not really inconvenient as the intention was to rebuild it anyway. We remove the whole carious lesion, all the decayed dentine, with a round burr mounted on contra-angled handpiece at low speed. The carious lesion is then cleaned and we prepare the rest of this cavity by preparing the cusps. It is therefore clear to us that we will have difficulty in restoring a satisfactory contact point in this zone, but that it will be a determining factor in the functional integration of the restoration. A paladent matrix is positioned at the distal level of the restoration and tightened to the cervical area by insertion of a wooden corner piece that will already produce a slight separation. The advantage of using the wooden wedge is that, if it remains in place long enough, the gap will be made progressively. This is always of interest at posterior sectors to obtain a good contact point. We see here the good cervical adaptation of the matrix, which must be absolutely perfect in order to avoid any overflow of the composite. The adhesive system we use here is Zeno 3, a single step self-etching adhesive which is of particular interest for posteriors as it minimises the risk of post-operative sensitivity. With this type of system, in fact, 
all the dentine that will be demineralized by the acid polymer will simultaneously be impregnated. As it is impregnated by the same monomer, which will be photopolymerized before placement of the composite occurs. We are looking at a two bottle system. One drop from each bottle is placed inside the small mixing device. This clicks dish, dappen dish, allows a good homogeneous mix, provides an effective protection against evaporation of the solvent and a protection from the operating light between two applications. The Zeno 3 adhesive system is applied to the dentine, taking care to ensure that it penetrates all the areas of dentine in order to ensure satisfactory seal and adhesion of the restoration. Do not forget to evaporate the solvent carefully so as not to lift the adhesive away and we like cure with the SmartLight PS.